In this video, we're going to look at reacting masses, otherwise known as molar ratios or stoichiometry. So we're going to use the equation linking mass of substance MR amount in moles, use equations, understand ratios, and answer more challenging reacting masses questions. So reacting masses, stoichiometry, molar ratios, is um, you can explain it using a cake analogy. So for example, if you're making a cake, um, say this particular cake needs six eggs, and needs 500 flour, 500 grams, doesn't matter. Okay, so you add those together, six eggs, 500, 500 flour, and you get one cake. So how much ingredients do I need if I want to make two cakes? Well, obviously I need double it, I need six eggs, sorry, I make extra six eggs, so 12 eggs, 1,000 flour, gives me two cakes. So molar ratios, um, when you're doing equations, it's exactly the same as this. Let's try it. What about if I wanted to make um, half a cake? So if I wanted to make um, half a cake or 0 0.5 cake, I need 3 eggs, 250 flour, 0 0.5 cake. But what about if I don't want cake? What about if I want, instead, I want lots of hydrogen gas? Okay, so one way to produce hydrogen gas is you can get some methane, so you get some methane fossil fuels, you can add some water, and you get some hydrogen gas, and you also get some uh, carbon monoxide. What people don't write in the equation is, is generally you can't see, see here, there's no number telling how much methane. If there's no number, you just assume that that number is 1. So I'm just going to write in those numbers so it's sort of clear in red. So this is just 1 methane, 1 water makes 1 carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon monoxide and makes 3 hydrogen gases. So these number, numbers are just ratios. Like in our cake analogy, it took six eggs and 500 flour to make one cake. So the ratio was six to 500 to one. One cake was made for every 500 flour for every 600 eggs. The ratio in this reaction is one methane to one water to one carbon dioxide to three hydrogens. I've drawn the ratio up here again because it was a bit messy, so it's one to one to one to three. So this ratios um, is known as the molar ratios, okay? So it means that I need, for every one mole of methane, I need one mole of water. And this branch of chemistry is known as stoichiometry, and it concerns the relationship between the relative quantities of substances taking part in a reaction forming compounds. Okay, so let's imagine I started off with not one mole of methane, but actually I started off with two moles of methane. How much water do I need to react with this, these two moles of methane? Well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so therefore I need two moles of water. And this two moles of methane, two moles of water, is going to make two moles of carbon dioxide. How much hydrogen are we going to get? Well, the ratio is one to three. So therefore, if I've got two, we just need to multiply up. Play up. So what you, the sort of easy way to do this is you divide by the big number, so one, so two divided by one is just two, and times by the big number for the one that you want. So times by three, so two times three is six. So you can see, we started off with two moles of methane and two moles of water, and we've now got six moles of hydrogen. Generally, in the questions you'll be dealing with, you'll start, they'll be using sort of decimals. So let's try a question, same sort of, same equation with decimals. So imagine we start off with half a mole, so 0 0.5 moles of methane. How much water do we need? Well, the, as the ratio is 1 to 1, we're going to need the same amount, so 0 0.5 moles of water. How much carbon dioxide will be produced? Again, it's going to be the same. It's a 1 to 1 ratio. How much hydrogen will be produced? So again, do the trick. So you divide by whatever you're um, starting with. So say we're starting with the methane. So 0 0.5 divided by 1 times by 3. So that equals 1.5. So this question is the sort of question you might meet. So it says calculate the mass of iron required to make 50 grams of iron oxide. Well, there's a little mistake here. That, those, that should be a subscript. That should be a little two and a little three. That's shown down here. 
So, here is the balanced equation, and it's really important, important that it is balanced. Um, we'll, I'm going to do another video later on check, to check that, showing you how to check if the equation is balanced or not, and how to balance it yourself. Uh, you can see the ratios. So it takes four iron plus three oxygens to make two iron oxides. So you've got a four to three to two ratio. So the first question is, you've got to, start, you've got to start from what information they give you. So they've given you the mass of the iron oxide. So we always start from there, if that's what they've given you. So the first step is generally always to work out the moles, because moles are what allow you to work out the ratio. So hopefully you remember the equation. You do need to memorize this one, that mass equals Mr. Mole. Mass equals the MR times moles. But we want to make moles the subject. So in that case, we want to get rid of the MR. So if we divide both sides by the MR, it will mean it will get onto the other side and we'll have moles on its own. So we've got MR divided by MR, which equals 1, and mass divided by MR. So mass equals, sorry, um, moles equals mass divided by MR. <coughs> so the mass is 50. And the MR, if you work out the MR of iron oxide, and I'll, I'll do a video on working out MRs if you don't know already, but um, the MR of iron oxide is 159.6, so it's 50 divided by 159.6 gives us, the, gives us the moles, which comes out at 0 0.3133 moles. That's moles. <coughs> now, what is the ratio of iron to iron oxide? Well, We've got two iron oxides to every four ions. And we're asked to work out the mass of ions. The ratio is two to four, two to four, which is the same as one to two. So it means that for every one iron oxide that is produced, that's made, I need two ions to make it. So if I made 0 0.3133 moles of iron oxide, how much did I iron did I need to make that? Well, I needed one, so divide by one times by two, so just that times two. So that comes out as 0 0.6266 moles. Now we weren't haven't been asked for the moles, we've been asked for the mass. So we just use our equation. Mass equals Mr. Mole to work out the mass. So that would be our mass, sorry, um, our MR of iron, look up on the periodic table, is 55.8 times the moles, 0 0.6266 equals 3, 5, zip point, sorry, 35.0 grams. So a very similar question, what is the mass of calcium oxide obtained from heating 25 grams of limestone? I've just rewritten this equation because it didn't have the... Um, the numbers as subscripts. So yeah, it's calcium carbonate, that's your limestone, calcium, or calcium carbonate is, goes to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now you can see the ratios. Remember if there's no numbers, it's just a one, a one. I'll write those in. So that's one calcium carbonate goes to one calcium oxide goes to one carbon dioxide. So the ratio is one to one to one. So as I mentioned, always start off with um, whatever you're given. You're given 25 grams of limestone, so that's what we use to work out the moles. So how many moles of calcium carbonate are there in 25 grams? Okay, so you need the MR of the calcium carbonate. Okay, use your equation. So moles equals mass divided by MR. The MR is 101. Okay, so you've got your moles, which is 0 0.2498 of the calcium carbonate. Okay, and now we've got to use the ratio. So, what is the ratio to calcium carbonate to calcium oxide? Well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So, therefore, how many moles will be made? Well, one-to-one -one ratio, so therefore 0 0.249 moles will be made. Then, so I've got 0 0.2498 moles of the calcium oxide. And now I've just got to use those moles along with the MR, the calcium oxide, to work out the mass. So, mass equals MR times moles. So we work out the MR, it turns out as 56.1 times the moles, which is so 
zero point, oops, running out of space. So we've got 56.1 times 0 0.2498. So that equals 14.0 grams. Double underline.